Hey, this is Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome back to the Love You podcast, where today we're going to talk about five signs that he's not that serious about you. Uh, this is an important podcast, so I really want you to listen to the end. As I said, um, I'm doing more personal content. Uh, I'm going deeper. I want to talk to you. I want to hear from you. Uh, I want to have more of a relationship with you than just shouting at you through the podcast and the video screen. And so stick around till the end of this episode to learn how to get on the phone with me and we could assess where you're at in your love life and how I could personally support you. It is my mission. Um, and the reason we're talking about five signs that he's not that into you is because in this day and age, which is filled with uh, swiping and texting and ghosting and breadcrumbing and disconnect, it's never been more important to be able to figure out what these signs are so you could be you could act on them instead of being blind to them. The fact is most guys are not your guy, but we've normalized bad behavior in dating. So we're trying to bring back, we can't necessarily change men. Right? We can't change the climate in which we're dating right now, which is not particularly positive, as you well know. But what you can do is tap into human behavior, predictable human behavior, and know what men are thinking, why they're doing what they're doing, so it's not so frustrating and it's not so mysterious anymore. And that is what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about the behavior that you're accepting from men, which is inherently unacceptable, so that you can raise your standards for dating and online dating. So, um, I got a lot to say today. Uh, I hope you could strap yourself in and enjoy this because these are all really, really important. You're probably going to want to share it with a friend. Uh, first sign that he's not that serious about you. He only texts and he doesn't ask you out. Now, we know that this happens all the time. It's not unusual. It's the very nature of dating apps, which take place on phones. You swipe in the app, you text and now you're stuck in texting hell. That's what I call it, texting hell. Right? He'll text you, hey, what's up? How's your day? And then when you take a lunch break, you see he texts and you're like, oh, great, how about you? He comes home from work, he texts you back, right? And this thing, right, not much, how are you, how's your day? Here's a picture of my lunch, right? Thinking of you, you know, it's just this long extended nothing where literally three minutes on the phone would be a better conversation than two weeks of text. And I'm not, I'm not making a larger statement about it. I'm saying that texting as it's currently used is a bad form of communication. It's just the one that everybody uses. So if a guy is texting you and he's not asking out, what does that mean? It doesn't mean you're not attractive. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It doesn't mean he's a bad guy. A lot of women are like, what's wrong with this guy? I mean, he, he, we, we matched on the app and he hasn't asked me out yet. Well, we've talked about it before. If a guy swipes right on a hundred women and 90 reject him, which is basically what happens, right? He's got 10 women who he's matched with and is theoretically texting. How many people could he conceivably take out on Saturday night? There's just one. And if that's not you, it doesn't mean anything. It just means it's not you. And how do we know? His behavior, right? You're being put on the back burner. You're being breadcrumbed, whatever you want to call it. And to some degree, women do the exact same thing with men. They're waiting for the, the, the tall, rich, gorgeous guy to emerge from the candidate. They don't want to book their Saturday night with some lower tier candidate. So everybody's texting and everybody's looking for the next best thing and everybody's dissatisfied with the experience. So we're going to try to bring some old school values back to dating. We need to understand that if a guy texts you and doesn't ask you out, it says everything about his mindset, his desire at this moment to be with you. And you shouldn't heavily invest in him and hope that one day this thing pans out. You don't have to block him. You don't have to yell at him. Just know that he has a whole bunch of options. You have a whole bunch of options. And it's almost a minor miracle that those options ever actually align. So it's not, it's, remember, this is about not taking things personally because you can't control. This is the nature of online dating. But if a guy is only texting you, you there's, there's, there's only a few things you could do. You could give better text, right? To differentiate yourself from other women. I like long form texts that seem more like emails. I like having a conversation because a conversation, not, hey, what's up emoji, but an actual conversation is gonna more organically lead to getting on the phone, right? And that's what we want is to get on the phone, right? Do a FaceTime, do a Zoom, something, 
All right, so if you have better conversation, if you can get more out of him, you're better likely to be the person who emerges from the pack. If you just go back and forth with this you know, one line stuff every other day, that could last for weeks or months and you've seen it before. So um, let's pay attention to the guys who never ask you out. Don't have to take it personally, don't have to do anything about it. What we need are more guys who are more eager to escalate things. Number two, his effort is inconsistent. So the first part was if you've met a guy on an app and you're just texting. Now you've met in person. Now you've gone out on a date or two. And after the date, he waits five days before contacting you. Or he texts you but doesn't follow up to ask you out again anytime soon. You're kind of just nowheresville. Or maybe he comes on really strong for the first couple weeks and he sees you three times in two weeks and then he sort of fizzles out. We don't know if because of another woman, we don't know if it's because of work. All we know is consistency is everything. And love you, we talk about the five C's. Character, kindness, consistency, communication, and commitment. Consistency is everything. Because if you don't have consistency, you can't feel safe. You'll always feel anxious. Now, at the beginning, you can't expect every guy to fall in love with you and every guy to act like a boyfriend. He has to have time to choose you. He needs time to differentiate you from everybody else he's talking to. All right? But we really want to pay attention to his consistency. If a guy hasn't found a sort of steady rhythm of communication, texting you every morning, calling you every Wednesday night, seeing you at least once a week for a few weeks before escalating, then he's probably not going to be your ultimate boyfriend. He's just not that serious about you. Right. At this point in time, he's not that serious about you. So once again, I wouldn't hold on to him too long, waiting for him to get better. Right? Once you see a guy is inconsistent because he made plans with you and then he canceled plans with you because he got really slammed at work and then this thing came up. And if you're dating a guy for eight weeks and you've only seen him three times, that tells me what I need to know about his desire for you and his availability right now. So cut those guys off when you realize that you're sinking time into something that's just not serving you well, right? Because you're sort of waiting for something to emerge and nothing's emerging. Uh, number three, he's been seeing you for two months and his profile is still active. And I, I use that number specifically. If I were a little more of a stickler, I'd say four to six weeks, but we'll say two months because it's a pretty crazy world, right? But if you're seeing a guy for that long, He's probably not that serious about you. In Love You, we have a video. Uh, we talk about the two paths that men take to choose girlfriends. The first path is Insta-girlfriend. I did this guilty as charged for most of my 20s and early 30s. I'd be dating a whole bunch of people casually, and then I'd find someone who knocked my socks off, and I would immediately want to be her boyfriend. Every, everybody would get blocked out. So some people got scared. Don't recommend that. You scare people off uh, by being too intense about it. Some people felt the same way. And then you dive into a relationship. You immediately start sleeping with each other. You become like insta couple in two, three dates. And then a month later, you realize, oh, shoot, I made a mistake. I just dove into a pool and didn't even look to see if there was water in it. So once you've had a bunch of those experiences, you learn, hmm, maybe not smart to dive into an instant relationship, even if there's chemistry and even if it sucks out there. You might want to slow walk it. People who slow walk it, more experienced, they're more likely to take four to six weeks. But there's a path, there's an escalation. It might start off as every other day texts and once a week dates, but sometime when you differentiate yourself from everybody he's talking to, he realizes he actually likes you and now he's calling you every other night. And now the dates turn into twice a week or he plans a weekend away with you, maybe that's a little premature, or he, he makes plans further in advance because he plans on seeing you again and he already knows it. There's a feeling that this is getting, gaining momentum. So if you're seeing a guy for two months and he doesn't want to be your boyfriend, right? he hasn't asked for the title, well, you kind of already know where you're going. I already stepped on point number four, but <laughs> that's where we're going to go next talking about boyfriends. But for point number three, if his profile is still active, it tells me that you are the Ms. right now. You're the person who's there for him right now. And he's perfectly content seeing you once a week. And he's perfectly content having sex with you as long as you allow it. Right? But if he really wanted to be your boyfriend, he would claim you sometime either in the first couple weeks, like a 29-year-old would, or sometime in the first six months to take you off the market and say, hey, let's give this relationship a shot. 
So again, pay attention to this behavior. If he's not your boyfriend in two months, he's not going to be your boyfriend. You don't hear too many stories about people who've been seeing each other for six months, right? And magically turn into happy couples. That's someone who's really, really non-committal. Number four, um, he never talks about a future and doesn't call you his girlfriend. Now, again, that's the next step chronologically. If you've been seeing a guy for four to six weeks, something like that, and he hasn't taken down his profile, called you his girlfriend, or talked about a future, what does that tell you? Well, for me, it tells me that there's a reason. Right? He doesn't talk about his future. There's a reason he never talks about one day when you meet my mom, one day when we have when we have a family, one day when, right? He doesn't want that. People reveal themselves. I tell my clients, you know, how do you know if a guy likes fantasy football? He tells you. You won't have to pry it out of him. Hey, Brad, do you like fantasy football? Nope, he'll tell you all the inner workings of his team that bores you. Men volunteer information all the time and guys who wanna get married talk about marriage and guys who wanna have kids talk about kids and guys who don't, don't talk about it because they know if they talk about it, the whole thing's gonna blow up. So they assiduously avoid the topic and the next thing you know, you're sleeping with a guy for four months and he might be acting like a boyfriend and he might, he might talk to you every day, but if you're sleeping with a guy for four months and he says you're exclusive, but he hasn't talked about a future with you nor called you his girlfriend, bad sign. He should want the job. He should solidify that, right? The act of not doing that tells me what I need to know. So women will stay with guys for four months, right? We're exclusive. We've been dating exclusively. He's not sleeping with anybody else, right? And are surprised and disappointed that that's all he wants. That's why he's doing it that way. So you want a guy who's an eager intern who really wants the job. You need to fire any guy who does not claim that job or ask for that job in a pretty short amount of time. Finally, number five, now we're at the next phase. He's a boyfriend, but he doesn't integrate you into his life. Okay, and what does that mean? It means you're kind of like a mistress. He sees you separately. He'll get together with you, he'll take you out to dinner, might take you for a weekend away, have sex, but you don't know his friends, you don't know his family, you don't necessarily you know, uh, have a drawer in his house. You don't talk every night about your days. It's this very compartmentalized thing. And I've talked to a lot of women over the years who have boyfriends who are really mysterious to them. And here's the thing, men shouldn't be mysterious. I, I, I know there's a, there's a thing around, like, a mysterious man is really attractive. That's fine if you find a mysterious man attractive. I'm telling you, you don't want a guy who has mystery. You want a guy who has no secrets, who puts his, you know, who communicates his feelings and puts his heart on the line and is authentic. You don't want to spend all your time worrying, what is this guy thinking? So guys who want to build a future with you, think about that. Hey, my sister's getting married this summer, right? Would you be my plus one? That's a normal thing for someone who to say to a girlfriend. If you've got a guy who's got a life and he's not doing those sort of things, oof, all right? And that's the hard part. All these things are big warning signs and the deeper you go, the more time you spend, the more sex you have, the more you get your hopes up, the closer you get to him, the more oxytocin and dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin, brain chemistry, the harder it is to pull away, which is why in Love You, we try to pay attention in the first month to these signs, the things I laid out for you to help you avoid getting in the situation at all because it is much harder to extricate yourself from a situation with a guy you've fallen in love with who didn't in integrate you into his life and didn't call you his girlfriend, I didn't take down his profile, effort is inconsistent, right? These are the signs early on to say no. Hope that was helpful. I know I went deep, I know it went long, but Boy, if you could figure this stuff out in the first month, uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble, a lot of heartbreak. The right guy does the right things. The wrong guy does the stuff I was talking about here below. Um, so don't pay attention to what happens on the date, how much I like him. Pay attention to what happens in between the dates. How does he follow up? And pay attention to your feelings. How do I feel? 
Do I feel anxious because I don't know if I'm ever going to hear from him again? Or do I feel secure? I know he's going to text me tomorrow and ask me out for this weekend. Right? Your feelings matter. Don't ignore your feelings. If you've spent your whole life ignoring your feelings, if you've been anxious in relationships, if you've wasted too much time on the wrong men, that's what I'm here for. Uh, my name is Evan Mark Katz. This is the Love You Podcast. Uh, feel free to subscribe on Apple or Spotify. Feel free to share it with a friend. Feel free to leave us a positive review. I read them. I read them closely. They make my day. Um, and finally, if you want help finding a quality man, if you want to change the way you're dating online, if you want to raise the bar on what you come to expect from men, if you want to be able to establish healthy boundaries, if you want to have a relationship where you're ultimately safe, heard, and understood, please reach out to me. Uh, the new way I'm doing business is I'm talking to more people. I'm not up here. I really want to talk to you. So go to evanmarkkatz.com forward slash book and you can book as little as a half hour call with me. We can do a dating assessment and figure out where you're at and what you want for your future and how I could support you. Um, it's my pleasure. It's my honor. I thank you for listening and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.